Pretty hard to be upset with that day. The only blemish out of the top two all day was poor little Captain's Maid who had uh, a bunch of aged horses to race against. And Aaron said he got run into at the half and um, a number of other things. But he said uh, he thought she raced well. That was Captain's Maid. That was the only horse to miss the top two today. Two more racing at Mount Gilead today. So for the two days at Mount Gilead, we had four wins, the second and two thirds, I believe. Uh, today, Momo looked great again. And somebody give me this. You know, gotta gotta say nice to the guy. You know, you gotta say thanks to the guy with the mullet. Thank you, Luke Ebersol. Did a great job. Took his time off shooting um, shooting uh, reruns for the Dukes of Hazard with his mullet. Uh, to go to go and drive our, our two horses in Mount Gilead. Now, Luke did a great job. He's a good driver and drove Momo great and drove uh, well and down great. Two for two for Jason and Kirby, Lauren, uh, Sydney, and uh, Daryl and Sonny in Ohio. Those are the people that work for us in Ohio. Uh, I was busy here in Pennsylvania. Now, between between I'm a Lovely Lady and Path of Totality, there were many tickets and many dollars burnt over the last 48 hours. Now, uh, I'm a Lovely Lady was just a little flat, it is what it is. Um, Path of Totality, I told Tim going out, I said, put the hood on her, I don't want her on the front end, I want to race her from off the pace. I'm not gonna go out there focused on making this 4700. I want to turn her into a nice horse. I want to make sure she continues to progress as a good horse. Um, she was a little wiry and a little hot warming up. I ended up in a good spot second over. She didn't pounce on them as well as she could. I talked to Tim after. He said, tiny bit of mucus, tiny bit of blood. I warmed her up pretty hard um, and she was a little, uh, how do you say, disheveled. A little, little um, angry, it seemed today in the post braid in the warm up. So not that shocked. I'm not concerned with that. We can dry her up. Just don't warm her up as hard as we did, which is fine. Um, minuscule amounts of blood, minuscule amounts of mucus. But nevertheless, got to clean her up, dry her up, and uh, change the way we go about training her and the way we warm her, in, war, the way we warm her up. She'll be just fine. Uh, finished second in 57. Race good. I was happy with her, but she did burn a ton of money. Barrels, wheel barrels of money. But... Um, I didn't want her on the front today, so raced her from off the pace. I thought she raced well, finished second. Uh, the first second race was great. Johan, I told everybody, I came down here. I got to the Meadows last night at 2.09. That's what time I walked in the hotel. So I got up yesterday at 8 o'clock, played with Addie for a little bit, you know, the kids. Uh, went and got my wife a drink at Starbucks. I got a drink at Starbucks. And then I get on the road. Uh, I drove all the way to Mount Gilead. I missed a turn somewhere because I know my, my GPS jumped by about 25 minutes and it didn't really dawn on me until that point how late I was. Uh, I got to the races yesterday with six minutes, eight minutes, something like that, nine minutes before post time. I, it ended up being the ambulance was late anyway, so it didn't matter. But uh, running it pretty tight. Had a great day at Mount Gilead, drove to Ohio. But it ended up being about an hour and 40 minutes for Jason and I. Drove to Ohio. Kind of a tough race with I'm a Lovely Lady, but she was second. You know, she, she did her work well. Scoped her today. Nothing in the scope. Um, Going to run some fluids through her. Uh, sure, there's no problem there. Um, and I also drove another horse I don't want to talk about and then a bunch of catch drives. So um, I was done driving at Northfield around 11 o'clock. Long day. Started at 8, now it's 11 p.m. I'm going to drive to the Meadows. Now, I talked to Johnny Shu on the way. Johnny's three hours behind us. He lives in California, so it worked out cool. Uh, killed at least half of the trip, talking to Johnny, a couple of their clients. Get to the tra get to the, the hotel. Um, 2.09, 2 Draw the drapes, lay down. Oh, my God, I slept good. I get up at 9 o'clock. Just in time to watch the qualifiers. Got to see uh, Nancy Allison qualify. She'll come back next week. 
Um, got to watch Aguilar AM qualify. She'll come back next week. Um, got to watch a little New York qualify for James uh, Cyrus Blue Chip. Qualified okay. Uh, and then Braemar also qualified. Now Braemar, uh, I haven't sent a note out yet. Braemar is coming here. He's coming to Pennsylvania simply because the maiden at Mohawk's too tough. Uh, I don't want to race him on a half mile track. The maiden here, the two year old maiden. So I think we're going to bring Braemar here to the Meadows uh, this week. We've already started the paperwork. He'll be here, uh, I would think, first part of next week. I'll get James and Johnny to train him up on the weekend hard again. And then he'll come to the Meadows first part of the week next week and race. So um, I will be sending a note out about this. If you haven't seen the note and you are watching this and you are a client and you do own pieces of Braemar and they happen to be more than 4%, you will need a license. So shoot me a, a text or an email or a call me, and I'll help you get licensed with, uh, with Bramer. So um, that was today. I get up. I wanted to be here. There's a reason I drove here, just not because I like torturing myself or I'm insomniac. I wanted to be here to make sure Johan warmed up well. First trip, I wanted to go two miles with him before he raced. Wanted to make sure I could drive him with some sort of confidence so that uh, when we headed out of the gate and into the first turn, I wasn't holding my breath. My butt wasn't puckered. So um, I got up at 9 o'clock, got a little coffee, latte. Went up to Tim's barn. Got changed, went down to the paddock. First trip with Yo Annie ran. Same place he ran last week. I'm getting angry. We put a little more weight on Johan. Went him again, went with him again another mile at 12 o'clock. 12, 11.55, 45, exactly. Better. Took the Murphy blind off him, and I think we had two sets of bell boots on him. And took, This is a horse that, for horsemen out there, this is a horse that raced with aluminum shoes up front. No problem at Mohawk. But you get to the turn, he'd touch himself up by his jack, and he'd just roll off. Being a coward or whatever, he rolled off. Put a set of bell boots on him, rolled off. Put two sets of bell boots on him, still rolled off. Put a set of toe weights on him today, took the Murphy blind off him. They come out of the gate, he never put a step in. Now, that's the first hurdle. Second hurdle is, he's a little bit of a nutcase. So I'm sitting in the three hole, we changed his bit, we changed his over check. I'm seesawing, I'm trying to get him to relax, and he did. I got him out in the last turn, he's charging on the end of it. The first time he actually did his work properly and attacked properly and looked like a horse that could have won, that maiden doesn't usually go that fast. And the horse got up the inside, slid up the inside and win. But Johan raced like a winner and tried to win, and he will win in the near future. I think we got him squared away now, so my little uh, 2 a.m. trip to Pennsylvania so that I could sleep here, be up in time to go up to Tim's barn and work with Tim to get this horse squared away all worth it horse finished second in 57 race great best mile i think the best overall race mile he's ever gone in his life maybe not the fastest not the fastest last quarter but the way he did it left dropped in the hole behaved sat attacked on the end of it best mile johan's ever gone so we got johan out of the way then we got uh path of totality out of the way i thought she raced good a little bit of blood a little bit of mucus don't worry too much about it just need to change the way we operate with her and I think that'll be fine. Worst case, the very worst case scenario, we put her on Lasix, which we're not there yet. So Path of Totality race good also, 57 and a piece. Very happy with her. She's turning into a nice horse. Then we go to race Spirit of Deal. Just like Path of Totality, I don't want her on the front, right? I know she's the best. I know she's one to nine. I know she's one to five, whatever. I know there's people out there betting her. I'm sorry about Path of Totality and I'm a lovely lady. But I am not just going to gun Spirit of Dio. It's just not going to happen. She's got a whole index of stakes ahead of her. Simcoe's coming up. We had a bunch of people ask. I think I'm going to skip the Simpo. Simcoe. I don't think I can be there, first off. I can be there on Tuesday. And if everything runs right, I get my COVID test. I have my exemption. If I get my COVID test, back in time, I can race. And if I don't, I can't. She fits a couple of classes here. I don't care about the Simcoe. I'm not going to the Simcoe. I'm going to skip the Simcoe. So if you're out there and you own Spirit of Dio and you're looking forward to the Simcoe, I don't, I don't, I guess it's not set in stone. I'd rather not go to the Simcoe. I'd rather let her build her confidence here. Aim for the elegant image, maybe the consolation if we're lucky. 
We still get the Breeders' Crown. We still get the Pegasus. I think we still got something called the Crossroads, I think. Spirit of Deal's got lots of stakes left. What she did today was cool. I let her hobbles out a couple of holes. You ever tried to do that before she'd run all over the track? Let her hobbles out a couple of holes. Got away seventh. I'm looking at how the race is shaping up. She's the best by far in the race. But I can see the guy in front of me looking to move. You know, he's like a trillion to one. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a shit show. So I move her over, follow him. I got to move three wide halfway down the back stretch. The second I get her out three deep, game on. She's coming 100. She corners around the last turn like she's on a rail. We come out of the last turn. It might have looked like there was a, a tussle, but there wasn't. You know, by the time I got to his wheel getting into the last turn, there was no doubt in my mind she was going to coast by and win. She's just a winner. She's just a good horse. Coast buys and wins. So now I leave the Meadows racetrack, the strip today. I get a win in two seconds. Excited about everybody. I guess I felt a little bad for the people that lost money on Path of Totality. I thought she could have won. Whatever. She raced good. Great day for us. Go to look at the results. Momo, win. Well and down, win. Um, big deal. I forgot about uh, Captain's Maid. I told you guys. She's in with aged horses. Can't do that. I told Tim, no more of that. I'll turn her out before I race her against three-year-olds. I'm not going to be Ron Burke's stepping stone with a three-year-old the first couple of starts lifetime. You know, a year older and twice as big as her. No, no thanks. So write a two-year-old race or I'll turn her out or we'll race her somewhere else but we're not racing her against eight horses anymore uh well and down win momo win guy with the mullet mullet drove great great job luke ever saw get up the inside to win with momo and then i'm watching the replay she gets spooked apparently walking back so uh when you win the race the way they do it in the fairs is they just draw blood no urine None of the urine collection. They just draw a vial of blood. See, you, you're on your way. So you literally take the bike off the horse here, walk it over to that gate. They draw blood, walk it back to the barn. That's how it works. On her way back to the barn, she gets spooked by the water truck and got away from Kirby and run loose for four laps. Momo did. Now, <laughs> go. It was funny now because she didn't get hurt, thank God. But. Go back and watch the live stream from the from, from the fair. They just showed her just running around, just pacing around, just looking around, and then she just stopped to eat grass and somebody grabbed her. So Momo got a race in and then a nice cool out. <laughs> she jogged around the track for four laps and then left. Uh, and then well and down, race great. Luke Ebersol moved her first over like she was, I don't know, bunny-like. <laughs> and she just cleared to the lead and gone. Uh, she raced great, so... They won. Then I watched Brilliant Corners. Hasn't raced. Johnny told me it was five days short of two months tonight. Same trip he had when he won in 54. Come first over. Horse just, he towed a horse up into it and just picked him off the wire. 54 and two or three. Race fantastic. Who would have thought Brilliant Corners would turn into that kind of... Next year, I want you guys to remember this video and any video we talk about Brilliant Corners. What kind of a horrible animal he was his whole life until he got to the races. He's like that kid that was just always causing trouble when he was young. I was that kid. I was that kid. <laughs> so, um, it's just so happy to see Brilliant Corners racing good for everybody that owns him. And for the horse himself, yeah, he was a, a problem child and a troublemaker when he was training down. But man, he's really put it together. So really impressed with Brilliant Corners. Just a great night. Three wins, three seconds, and an unfair defeat of Captain's Maid. Racing against age horses. Another fantastic day at the stable.ca. Man, oh man, we're really putting it on. Got bottle of red tomorrow, 6 to 5 morning line. Nothing at Ohio. It's a Wednesday. I don't think we have anything in anywhere else. Maybe Indiana. Maybe Indiana. Um, Thursday's a big day qualifier for gray as a new red re-qualification for rose run why not i expect they'll just both be fine biggest of all jazzy judy's gonna school I'm gonna school jazzy judy in 210 off the bike off the gate in the race bike friday i'm here at the meadows uh saturday i didn't tell anybody this saturday we are at the fair another fair 
all the horses that raced in Mount Gilead are going back Saturday at Bur Burton. Burton, that's the name, Burton. We're going to Burton. Um, yeah, it's back close for some of them, but you're talking about fair racing, I mean, they'll be fine. So, um, we're waiting for the blood work to come back, and I'm a lovely lady. If it comes back good, she might go, because she's got such a long time before the consolation. Now, like, none of this matters if she happens to draw in the final, which she won't. Let's just put that to rest. Consolation's like a month away. Uh, getting beaten the maiden's actually cool. We can race her in the fair. None of the fairs count as wins. So probably fair, back in nine days, eight days. I'm going to race her here, I think, at the Meadows in the maiden. Two-year-old filly maiden trot. Um, now it's Pennsylvania owned or sired, but they've needed horses the last little while. So if we could get her in here, that'd be cool. Um, so lots of racing still for all these horses. Mom knows best. Could, she could trot in 57 over the Meadows. I'm certain of it. She could race in the Nomers of Two, which is a class below Path of Totalities. There's still lots of racing. I don't want to race these horses in Northfield. Racing against the aged horses. I know, technically, I just said I was going to race against aged horses. Here is different. Tight track. They go fast as hell over there. I went 56 in a piece in the maiden the other night. I'm like, come on. So, uh, well, that's not true. I guess I'm a lovely lady's race. I only went 59. So that's, that's not true. Um, but just a great run. We've been on a fantastic run. The horses have been good. Um... I've actually been driving pretty good. Luke Ebersol's been driving great. So uh, pretty happy with today. If you're not happy with today, if you're not happy with everything that took place in the stable today, just leave. Just leave. We're never going to be able to make you happy. Um, even the captain's made thing. Come on. You don't have to be Columbo to figure out what happened there. Racing its age horses. First door, a guy came out underneath her. You know, and then she had jammed up with the horse that made a break in the last... Come out in front of her and then made a break in the last turn. Interfered twice with by the same horse in three eighths of a mile um she'll be fine she'll bounce back but i don't have much interest in racing against those three-year-olds anymore so either they find a way to fill a two-year-old race or i mean realistically i can shut her down for a month bring her back in the late fall winter and beat up on them here and be fine i don't have a problem with it anywhere really for that matter so tons of avenues tons of places to go with all these horses today really excited about um Really excited about Johan. Really excited about um, Spirit of Dio was fantastic again. Just a beast. Uh, and Brilliant Corners was good. And then the two wins of the fair is just great. Somebody's calling me. Oh, I better call him back. Okay. Um, so a great day today. 17 minutes of rambling. It was precipitated by somebody saying, you better say thanks to the hillbilly with the mullet. Just joking, Luke. Not about the mullet, but about the hillbilly. Uh, you did a great job today. Thank you very much. I will talk to everybody. Not tomorrow. We only got one race. And I don't need to give you a video by tomorrow. Cheer me on. Bottle of red. Race 13 tomorrow. Take care.